Hey everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Time for another movie review. Tonight's movie, The Vast of Night. Um, so, it's about two people who listen to radio frequencies and they hear something, some frequency that might be from, maybe from outer space, I don't know. They're in New Mexico in the 1950s, so I just assume that's what it's about. Um, and it changes everything when they hear this. So, two young teenagers, I guess. Here's the thing, 6.8 on IMDb. I don't know, I just found it. Over 4,179 people have viewed it so far. So that's that's pretty strong right there. As I look at the names, I don't know, I don't recognize anybody in it, but here's what I'll do. I'll get into it a little bit, find out what it's really about, um, and see if there's any anybody else we recognize, and then ultimately, I'll let you know what I think. So stick around, I'll be back. Hey everybody, I want to do a quick check in here. We're watching The Vast of Night. We're at the 48 minute, 43 second mark. It's an hour and 31 minutes long, the movie. It takes place in 1950. This is, I don't know what year, but it's in the 50s. Um, and uh, in New Mexico. And it's a small town in New Mexico where basically everybody knows each other. When there's a basketball game, a high school basketball game, everybody goes to the game kind of situation. You know what I mean? Um, and our two main characters are Faye and Everett. And uh, Faye is a um, telephone switch operator, you know, connecting people. And uh, Everett is a DJ. Now they have their, they have a friendship outside of that. Uh, she gets a tape recorder and he helps her figure out the tape recorder, that kind of thing. And then they walk to work together. He goes to be the DJ and uh, she goes to be the tele telephone switch operator, right? And it's really focused on them. Um, and while she's doing the telephone, she hears this weird sound come through. Um, you know, like like an alien sound. You know, I, I, that's not what it is so far. So I'm not, but that's the best way to describe it instead of me doing it. Um, so she calls around, trying to figure it out. She gets a hold of Everett and says, you know, it came over the radio as well. Like when she heard it on the telephone, also came over the radio. They discuss it. So he decides to play the sound on the radio to see if anybody knows what it is. And then uh, a caller called in, Billy, um, and tells him, you know, some of the situations he's been in that, uh, and he's heard this sound before. And he explains his whole story. So, um, and at one point he said that, uh, you know, there's tapes, he got a tape of it, but he doesn't have it, there's another one there. Um, and, oh, I forget, the, Cayuga, I think is the name of this town. So they're trying to find a tape, whatever. Uh, that's not important, but that's they're trying to figure out what the sound is. They're hinting that it's an alien type sound, um, but it's 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 pretty interesting. Um, <clears throat> it's also shot very interesting. First of all, the 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 main part of the movie is very gritty, you know, not clear or crisp. Um, so I think they did that for a certain reason. But then they also shrink the screen. They even started off in the beginning where you're showing a 1950 TV and you're kind of watching a movie through that initially, you know, so it's like black and white and, you know, really hard to watch. Um, but it comes out of that and goes into the regular movie, but they often go back to it. In addition to that, they're also doing at points when Billy's telling the story, the screen goes black. I thought there was something wrong, but then they did it again. Um, so it's kind of, it's interesting. It's like, really having you use your hearing while it's going on and pay attention. But I just I thought that's interesting. You don't see that that often. I, I, they did it like two or three times, but that shrinking and making it black and white like you're watching TV, that happens pretty often. Um, so that's where we are. Um, I found those things interesting. It is a pretty interesting movie. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see where it goes kind of thing. Um, and we've got a little bit more. So I'll get back to it here. Um, hopefully we find out a little bit more, hopefully it continues along this mysterious, intriguing path and comes to a good conclusion, but I don't know. What I'll do is I'll watch the end of it and then give you my final thoughts. So, stick around. Hey everybody, we're at the credits of The Vast of Night, and I have to say, it, it stayed good. You know, what I liked up until the first check-in continued um, until the end. 
Sierra McCormick is Faye, and Jake Horowitz, as the credits roll here, is uh, Emmett, or e Everett, Everett. Um, so there are two main characters, and, and, you know, the movie doesn't have a lot of um, characters in it. So there's, there, there's more than just those two, but for the most part, it's just them throughout the entire movie. Um, and it's kind of action, keeps you going the whole time. And not so much action as in stuff blowing up, but they're always doing something. Where are they going to go next? What's going to happen? Kind of thing. Trying to figure out what these sounds are. What does it mean? Leading them down different paths. Trying to figure this all out. Um, and and I, I thought it was really good. So if you like alien type movies, sci-fi, mystery um, movies, you'll in, I think you'll really enjoy this. I liked it a lot. Um, seven, a little bit over seven, I would say, 7.49. Um, that's how much I liked it. I liked, uh, I liked the style of filming. It almost, I was just thinking about it, was it like shot on an eight millimeter camera or something like that? The way it did that. And then, and switching to like being on TV and then switching to dark screens and stuff like that. But it keeps you moving and keeps you interested throughout the entire piece, even with just two characters. And I liked uh, you know, for the most part, Everett, Jake Horowitz's character, very, um, you know, interesting, obviously as a DJ, he's got the, the you know, the, the gift of speaking. Um, there's are times where I thought he was a little rude, um, and so if they would have eliminated that, I would have liked him even, even more. And Faye is a 16-year-old, innocent little girl, um, you know, who, who's got a job and stuff like that, and... I think they they play well together, except for that one jerkiness of him. But everything else, um, I thought they they worked well together. They, you know, they're, they're characters, not the actors. The actors were fine, but and I never heard of them before. And then you know, and then so you're seeing what's going on in the ending. Um, I like the ending too. I like what they did there. So all in all, I think from start to finish, I enjoyed it. This the beginning of it had me going because it has Everett like going to the basketball game like as they're setting up for the basketball game and he's talking he's talking so much it's like wow this is crazy you know what's going on but it, it slows his, his it slows down and you start to get a little bit more after that piece so it's, not that it's terrible but it was like what you know that kind of thing got me I don't know I don't know why I just told you that but that's it that's what I got for you I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to go ahead and check that one out no reason you shouldn't if you have seen it already what'd you think um, I, I liked it a lot. That's it. That's all I got. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Um, tell all your friends. Hit the like button if you want. More importantly, keep coming back to Kimmel's Irish Pub. We get little gems like this that I make you aware of and maybe you'll enjoy too. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.